the U.S. Army revealed the replacement of the legendary Hellfire Missile. The renowned Hellfire Missile, which has been in use for almost 40 years, will soon be replaced by Lockheed Martin's AGM-179 Joint Air-to-Ground Missile, or JAGM. On August 30th, the U.S. JAGM's full rate production has been authorized by the Army. The JAGM builds on the low-cost, high-accuracy Hellfire legacy by fusing numerous targeting systems into a single weapon, despite the fact that it may seem quite similar to its predecessors. As a result, one missile can replace both of the Hellfire missiles that are now in the stockpiles of the United States and its allies. So, will the new JAGMs exceed the legendary Hellfire missile? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Future Warplanes, where we tell you about military fighter jets, military drones, military planes, from the currently famous in the air to the most advanced around the world. And in addition for the latest episodes, we'll be covering all military defense news. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. And before we proceed, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell icon so you do not miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's begin! In order to equip American rotorcraft like the brand new AH-64 Apache with an efficient anti-tank weapon, the AGM-114 Hellfire missile was developed in the 1970s. Hellfire was originally intended to be an acronym for the longer Heliborn Laser Fire and Forget missile, but it quickly gained popularity because it was so effective and was added to more platforms. Modern versions of the Hellfire are used as surface-to-air missiles in a variety of platforms today, including rotorcraft, helicopters, fixed-wing aircraft, ships, and even land-based launchers. The AGM-114 R9X, a Hellfire missile that swaps its explosive warhead with a set of six deployable 18-inch blades intended to take out high-value targets without harming any innocent bystanders, was created as a result of the amazing precision of these weapons. However, this weapon has only seen limited use by intelligence and special operations teams, and it doesn't seem to have entered the ordinary troops. The AGM-114R Hellfire II, often known as the Hellfire Romeo, and the AGM-114L Longbow Hellfire make up the main family of Hellfire missiles used today. Numerous components, including warheads, are shared by these two rockets. However, their targeting is so drastically different that users must keep separate inventories of each. Both of these specialist weapons will be replaced by the joint air-to-ground missile, model number AGM-179. With 20 pounds of explosives that can be delivered to targets more than 6 miles away using a highly precise, semi-active laser guidance system, the Hellfire Romeo is more closely related to its forebears than most other modern weapons. For a variety of platforms, including the AH-64 Apache of the Army, the AH-1W Super Cobra of the Marine Corps, and the long-loitering MQ-9 Reaper UAV of the Air Force, it serves as the main air-to-surface weapon. The AGM-114L Longbow is the other Hellfire missile currently in use. It replaces the laser guidance system with the Millimeter Wave, or MMW, radar system, enabling the missile to perform with high accuracy at distances beyond line of sight or in conditions that could impair the effectiveness of laser guidance, like bad weather or heavy smoke. The main anti-tank armament system for the renowned tank hunter Apache is the Longbow, although the Army and Marine Corps prefer to have more Hellfire Romeo general-purpose air-to-surface missiles in their arsenals. Even so, the Longbow missile's production ceased in 2005, despite its shown effectiveness. The AGM-179 JAGM is equipped with a dual-mode seeker that combines millimeter wave radar and semi-active laser sensors, in contrast to the Hellfire Romeo and Longbow missiles. According to a report by Joey Drake, director of the JAGM program at Lockheed Martin, it combines the Hellfire Romeo and Longbow choices into a single missile. Therefore, he said, one missile, numerous platforms, and multiple missions for all the services. Up until recently, the two Hellfire missiles at their disposal required pilots or other operators to make a judgment about how to engage a target. When it has a clear line of sight, the Romeo's laser targeting system is very accurate, but the Longbow's millimeter wave radar performs better in poor weather or when the opponent uses active measures, like a smokescreen, to obstruct aiming. When using the AGM-179 JAGM, pilots can forego this calculation and simply engage targets with the same missile, regardless of the setting or circumstance. Without the need for pilot input, the missile will automatically switch to the millimeter wave radar sensor if, for example, it is using the semi-active laser seeker to approach a target and suddenly discovers that smoke is blocking its view. 
When navigating to engage the target, Drake said, the millimeter wave capabilities help us to disregard those things that try to distract us. Therefore, we make sure that the job is successfully performed regardless of what they do to attempt to divert our attention, such as using smoke or other feature sets that may be on those platforms. Not only is it useful in battle to have one missile that can replace two, but it also saves money. Since the AGM-179JAGM and the Hellfires it will replace share a significant number of similarities, ground crews and pilots won't need much training to operate it. It can also be utilized with the Hellfire launchers and infrastructure that are already in place. But more critically, it also entails reducing the number of various weapons that deployed units must have on hand. Drake stated in a report that from a purely logistical perspective, it's one less missile in inventory that you have to logistically maintain. Additionally, he continued, since it's used by all the services, it allows for flexible use of those resources on the battlefield. In a way, the advantages of switching to the AGM-179JAGM over the Longbow and Romeo Hellfire missiles are similar to the justifications NATO gave for switching to the 5.56mm round in 1980. In the event of war, a single round utilized by all member states made it more affordable and simple to obtain and transport ammunition throughout the alliance while enhancing the interoperability of diverse national forces. Given that both nations utilize the same rounds, if Germany has a supply of ammunition and America needs more for the battle, the transfer is straightforward. For the various American military branches, the AGM-179 provides comparable advantages. Logistics overhead is reduced when Army, Marine, and Air Force troops are deployed together and use the same missile system. In a crunch, an Army Apache unit in need could even borrow JAGMs from a neighboring Air Force Reaper unit with a surplus laying around or vice versa until more munitions could be sent. When it comes to recent advancements in military technology, hypersonic missiles and AI-driven drones may garner the most of the headlines, but devices like the AGM-179JAGM provide a glimpse into the near future of warfare that is both effective and cost-effective. For pricey and highly advanced systems like a $100 million boost glide weapons and sleek next-generation stealth planes, a major battle with somebody like China is frequently viewed as the big game. Making effective use of the technology at hand will be key to winning a conflict between sophisticated industrial nations. This implies that updating and upgrading low-cost weaponry and coming up with innovative methods to use current systems are just as crucial as creating and deploying next-generation technology. Programs like the AGM-179JAGM and the Air Force Research Lab's Rapid Dragon, which aims to use existing cargo aircraft to deploy massive volleys of cruise missiles, fill the gap between cutting-edge technology that is too expensive to field in large quantities and legacy systems that are becoming obsolete. Financial attrition is a deadly weapon in massive battles. However, with the help of cutting-edge systems like the JAGM, America can make sure it has the firepower necessary to win battles now, while also creating the firepower required to win battles in the future. And that's it for today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the like button and share with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comment space below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. And you can also check out other videos that have been specially selected just for you. We'll catch up with you next time. Thanks for watching.